Hello, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I'll be covering the history of C Sharp from my perspective, which begins with Turo Pascal in the early 90s. My friends and I would dabble in uh, game development for MS-DOS using Pascal. Uh, Turo Pascal is from a company called Borland, and the lead behind this product was Anders Heilsberg, uh, who we're going to be talking about today because he's the guy behind C Sharp. But before C Sharp happened, Java happened, and C Sharp happened because of Java. Sun developed Java in the mid 90s for uh, write once, run any, everywhere capabilities. Uh, it popularized, though, did not invent the notions of portable bytecode, virtual machines, garbage collection, and memory safety. And it grabbed Mindshare rather quickly, eventually in 2004, becoming the language for the AP computer science exam in the United States. And many universities by this point had also switched to using Java as their teaching language, replacing Pascal. Uh, uh, Java became important in the mid-90s when Netscape Navigator uh, shipped with uh, Java support. They had support for Java apples, little rectangles in your web pages that were much more interactive than you could usually otherwise do. If Netscape had support for Java applets and web browsers were becoming big, Microsoft had to have it also. So there in IE3, they also released support for Java applets with technology they licensed from Sun. Uh, and they wanted to have additionally some uh, good developer support for uh, Java on the Windows platform. So they hired away uh, some employees from Borland, which Borland wasn't very happy about, including uh, Heilsberg. Uh, they developed an IDE called Visual J++. Uh, I used this in a Java programming job in the late 90s. It was my first exposure to an IDE with auto completion support. I actually liked the product overall. I thought it was pretty good. Sun did not like uh, what Microsoft is doing with Java, however. They were not happy with incompatibilities and or extra features introduced by Microsoft, so they sued them. And uh, back in these days, it's worth understanding, uh, for people within the computing industry, sometimes they looked at Microsoft as an evil empire. We have Bill Gates the Borg here. You will be assimilated. Amiga computers had mostly died by this point. Atari ST had died. Apple looked like it might die. And this whole idea of cross-platform computing promised by Java was one of the ways people thought they could try to attack Microsoft. Uh, the U.S. government also wasn't happy with Microsoft and investigated them for illegal monopolistic practices. They ordered them to be split into two companies. Uh, that got later rolled back, and they put other constraints on them and said in a settlement. Uh, however, Microsoft, due to their legal battles with uh, jo uh, Sun over Java, presumably thought they'd like to have their own independent direction. They announced in 2000 the Microsoft.NET platform, a common language runtime with uh, a managed runtime. Again, a lot of the same features Java has, though targeting only the Windows platform. They developed their own programming language called C Sharp, which originally the code name was C-like object-oriented language. Heilsberg was the designer of this language. They eventually renamed it to C Sharp before they released it. This was a common language runtime for .NET, however. Microsoft got started on BASIC, and they released Visual Basic .NET, not quite compatible with old VB, but it's an interesting part of the history of BASIC nonetheless. C Sharp was designed for both uh, client and server-side development. Uh, Java had already become very popular in server-side development by this point, and C Sharp was designed to do so as well. C Sharp 1.0 came out in 2002, and as Microsoft points out here in their own documentation, it looked a lot like Java. Here's one possible reaction we had to C Sharp when it came out. Why Microsoft C Sharp isn't. From a CNET News article here, James Gosling, the creator of Java, says, you guys at Microsoft still don't get it because C Sharp is sort of like Java with reliability, productivity, and security deleted. Part of micro, uh, Sun's marketing strategy was to uh, mock and diss Microsoft. However, C Sharp was also standardized by a third party standards body, the European Computer Manufacturers Association, or ECMA, in 2001. They were standardized by ISO in 2003. Sun considered these standardizations to be rubber stamps and illegitimate. Um, and Sun had ongoing legal battles with Microsoft, which they eventually settled in 2004, uh, where uh, Microsoft agreed to pay Sun $1.6 billion to put their legal troubles behind them. And this somewhat cleared the path ahead for uh, Microsoft on the .NET front. Uh, now, after Heilsberg, I think the most important person in the history of C Sharp and .NET is Miguel de Casa. Uh, in 1997, he and Federico Mena Quintero started the GNOME desktop uh, platform for Linux. And in 1999, they released GNOME 1.0. Uh, GNOME is still in use today, though it has changed quite a bit since those days. Uh, de Casa and Nat Friedman and others in 99 also started a company called Helix Code, later renamed to Zemian, to be the GNOME company. 
And uh, Dacos was not terribly happy with using C as a programming language for GNOME, however. He felt it was inefficient and that a managed runtime would also allow for more secure software and so on. And he was a big fan of the work Microsoft is doing with .NET and C Sharp. Notice this is still right in the early days of .NET when Mono was announced. This is an open source implementation of .NET and C Sharp and De Casa was the guy behind this. He's the guy really pushing it. Uh, by the way, the language is, uh, this platform is called Mono, not Mono. Mono is Spanish for monkey. It's a monkey people, Zimian, Mono, monkey, Mono. Anyway, uh, Novell acquired Zimian in 2003. They're trying to become a hip Linux company. Uh, so they spent some resources on SUSE Linux and on Zimian, and they funded Mono development for the next several years. Uh, inside the GNOME community, there were arguments over whether C Sharp belonged or didn't belong inside of GNOME. Uh, they cost wanted it to be central to GNOME development uh, going forward. Uh, some people had other opinions. Giving C Sharp such a role would be a very bad strategic move since it would encourage a large community to move in a direction that serves our declared enemy, Microsoft. Uh, nonetheless, in uh, 2006, the first uh, application uh, for uh, written in C Sharp for GNOME became part of the GNOME desktop. It's called Tomboy. It was a note-taking application. People were dipping their, their feet in the waters of... Uh, using C Sharp and GNOME and Linux development. However, not everyone is happy with this. Also in 2006 came out the programming language Vala, which looked a lot like C Sharp, but compiled to C, did not require runtime and did not require explicitly Microsoft technologies. Um, now we get to the third part of our, what I think are the most important people in C Sharp and .NET. In 2002, uh, Nicholas Francis, Joachim Anta, and David Helgeson uh, got together to start a game engine. They started a company called Over the Edge Entertainment and a game engine called Unity. Unity was released in 2005, first for Mac OS and later the same year for Windows. They first were going to be using Python for scripting. However, they found that Python was not sufficiently fast in its execution for doing game development. And so they chose to use Mono to provide a more efficient uh, scripting solution for Unity. Uh, they liked the multi-language uh, notion of the CLR as well. Uh, for example, there was an open source language called Boo, which is sort of like uh, C Sharp under the covers, because it's a .NET language, but uh, in the skin of Python. And so they figured this could be approachable for people who wanted a simple scripting language. Boo was supported for many years in Unity uh, as part of uh, their Mono runtime that they used for uh, user scripting. F Sharp also came out in this time. F Sharp is probably the most popular language these days on .NET behind C Sharp. It's a functional programming language in the ML family. Uh, C Sharp 2 came out around 2005 as well with reified generics and generator functions, fantastic features. C Sharp 3 came out with local variable type inference and more importantly, language integrated query. It's sort of like bringing SQL into the programming language. I cannot go into the features here, but it's fantastic and uh, was really uh, unheard of this kind of feature in any kind of uh, popular programming language at the time. Uh, Silverlight was also used by Microsoft in 2007. Uh, this was sort of like uh, Adobe Flash, uh, but in .NET. This is also the old Java applet thing resurrected again. Flash is very popular in these days. Uh, Java applets were not, but Microsoft wanted some of the action and were they gonna have a cross-platform Silverlight plugin so you could do development uh, for browser applets uh, using .NET. They tried to make it amenable to uh, web developers. They also had visual development uh, tools for this. Uh, it eventually died, just cut into the chase. It was years later, but Flash died and Silverlight died too. It's just an interesting part of the story of C Sharp and .NET. C Sharp 4.0 came out in 2010 with uh, optional dynamic typing. C Sharp 5.0 came out in uh, 2012 with async and await support. The same way that uh, C Sharp promoted uh, async await here in uh, 2012 is later picked up in very similar forms by JavaScript, Python, and recently by Rust as well. C Sharp 6 came out in 2015, where perhaps the most important feature is actually the compiler itself. They made a new compiler called Roslyn, which is written in C Sharp and can be used as a library for uh, rather arbitrary usage uh, needs. Uh, and also importantly in this time frame, this is when Satya Nadella becomes CEO of Microsoft. This is sort of the beginning of the new Microsoft. And they got right away to interesting announcements like they're going to release a new .NET runtime called .NET Core, including Roslyn as an open source C Sharp compiler. Uh, and so they're going to have cross-platform and uh, open source implementation of .NET. They also announced things like .NET Native for compiling to executables that don't require separate .NET runtime. More recently, they have a product called CoreRT for an ahead of time compiler, which will not announce until later. We see the first initial commits in their GitHub repo are in 2015 for CoreRT ahead of time compiler. 
Uh, going back to the story of De Casa and Mono, uh, in 2011, Novell was uh, acquired and they laid off all the hipsters, including De Casa and the people behind Mono. And so they went and started their own company, uh, this time called Xamarin. And they had ideas that they're going to make money by creating proprietary products built on Mono for iOS and Android development because smartphones were a thing by this point. Oh, look, here's our monkey again. Uh, anyway, this product was called Mono Touch. And a few years later, under the new uh, Nadella regime uh, and .NET Core open source announcements, Microsoft acquired Xamarin because Xamarin already had a lot of uh, lead in terms of cross-platform open source .NET development, including out to iOS and Android. So the idea is to fold uh, Xamarin in and coordinate a project strategy to be able to uh, reach as large a market as possible in this open source uh, cross-platform future of .NET. Uh, .NET Core was released in 2016, 1.0 was. Uh, going back to Unity, because we don't want to forget them either, they had had some kind of weird licensing arrangement with whoever owned uh, Mono over the years. And uh, they had lagged behind in support. All those cool C-sharp features we talked about, they didn't have them in Unity at this time. They announced, however, they were going to make their own IL. That's the bytecode of .NET, IL to uh, C++ compiler with the idea they could be more performant and have sort of their future more in their own hands and reach cross platform the way they wanted to. Um, Again, I'm not sure exactly what the licensing was or technological issues going on, but that happened anyway. Uh, but in terms of the importance of Unity to the .NET ecosystem, uh, Microsoft, even back in 2016 in their weekly uh, .NET uh, blog uh, posting, started doing a game of the week. Most of these were made in Unity. And the fact that Microsoft chose to include a game of the week uh, in their blog post each time tells me that Microsoft also considered Unity to be, to, Unity to be an important part of the .NET ecosystem and Mindshare. Uh, however, uh, we talked about how Unity was going to make the IL to CPP thing. Well, in this uh, new cross-platform uh, open source future, apparently they worked out their legal and technical differences. And in 2018, Unity caught up and became modern in terms of its C-sharp and Mono support. Uh, C-sharp 7 came out in 2017, which included pattern matching. C-sharp 8 came out this year with switch expressions. Both these things are bringing C-sharp into a more functional programming perspective which a lot of uh, popular languages are doing recently. Function, functional programming is becoming a big thing. Uh, 2018 is the most recent ISO standard for C-sharp. They have continued to standardize C-sharp through external standards bodies. Java never has been. Uh, in terms of C-sharp in the browser, uh, this little project called Blazor is something that Microsoft picked up. Uh, the part I'm concerned with here is the client side uh, execution in WebAssembly. WebAssembly is a new binary uh, code format for web browsers that's supported across browsers. And the idea is you should be able to compile your C-sharp uh, components such that they run in the browser in uh, uh, native speeds. And uh, this could be interesting to see how it plays out. .NET 5 was also introduced this year as the successor to .NET 3.0. Basically, they're saying that .NET Core is the future of .NET. A lot of details to sweep under the rug here, but I think it's terribly interesting development. I think it's a good direction to go. Um, in terms of other related things, I want to talk about uh, the Godot game engine. This is probably the open source game engine with the most mind share still far behind unity but it's interesting to see they have this gd script which looks like python they've also recently picked up support for c sharp and mono and i'm inclined to believe that the c sharp will win over time over their gd script if we have anything to learn from history in terms of other learning from history c sharp started because of sun versus microsoft these days oracle owns java and we have oracle versus google uh, Google some years ago then started working on their own languages as well. They developed uh, Go for backend servers and services. It has taken off, become very popular in the years since it's been released. They also made a language called Dart, which has not been nearly as popular as Go, but the idea is Dart is for the front end. Unlike C Sharp, which did back and front end, Dart is primarily front end, Go is primarily back end. And while Dart hasn't been terribly successful, it's had a good year and may have a future ahead of it. What has Anders Heilsberg been doing meanwhile? He's still working on programming languages for Microsoft, but he's primarily been focused in recent years on TypeScript, which I think is also a fantastic language, and we'll have to talk about more in the future. Bye, y'all.